Hey, Brandon here, host of the Debbie Deep Dive podcast and creator of the Debbie Dashboard. Welcome to my channel and thanks for tuning in. Got a great show today with the Debbie Dashboard crew, my, my squad, the guys that participate in the Debbie Dashboard all the time. We have a great show today. I'm here with Dan, Sal, Dez, Corey, and Britt. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? Uh, doing good. Woo! Good, yeah. man. Good. Happy so we got here. a group. We got a great show. So we decided a couple of weeks ago that we wanted to do a uh, basically a five round freshman draft. Right. So we got these exciting players coming into college. We're super excited about it. We'll be joining the teams this fall. And we figured, you know, what? Well, let's see what the value looks like for all of us crazy guys in these C2C leagues. Right. And then we got our supplemental drafts coming up. And uh, so we wanted to see, you know, what does the first, you know, five rounds look like of our 15 round supplemental draft? Or if you're in a startup, this will be some really good value for you as well to kind of see where uh, these these freshman uh, players are being valued. So we're going to get right into it. Um, Corey Piera has the uh, it's going to be basically a PPR super flex, the standard stuff, tight end premium, although I'm sure we're not going to see tight ends. We're going to only, we're only tonight, we're going to go through the first two rounds. I will post at the end of the show, all five rounds. So you can see all the players that were taken in this draft. Um, but let's get right to it, man. Corey, you've got the first pick. You got the lottery ball at number one. So who did you take with the first exciting freshman hitting the field this fall? All right. I kind of got the easy pick here. So uh, it doesn't take long to really see why Nicholas Singleton was the number one ranked back in this class. You know, uh, Gatorade National Play of the Year last year, over 6,300 yards and 116 touchdowns in his high school career, uh, 2,044 touchdowns in his senior season, over, over 12 yards per carry. He's a really nice career. He's got the NFL size you want to see, 6'1", 210, uh, recorded at 10.8, 100 meter dash time, which is a pretty good time. I know there's some of those mile per hour experts out there, big wide receiver guy, a few does a mm -hmm. couple of them too. At the, They got him clocked at 21.7 miles per hour. So that's what you want to see. Um, he's a violent runner. Love that. He explodes off the ball. Good acceleration. Uh, powers through people. He's hard to get a hand on. You know, displays that elite contact balance that you want to see. And he's quick for his size, too. You know, he's, he can make adjustments in the open field, which is something you like to see. Um, he did kind of run out of this, this triple option offense in high school where he was kind of the toss option. So he, a lot of outside runs. Not a lot of experience running in between the tackles. So he did... Uh, he did get a few more in his senior year, which is nice to see. He showed some quality improvement there, but uh, that could be something that could be a transition point for him. Um, also less than 20 receptions in his high school career. So going to have to see if he can be a viable pass catcher too. Um, but yeah, I mean, the reports have already been good at, at uh, Penn state um, starting this spring. Uh, Noah Kane left, as we all know, uh, Kayvon Lee was their guy from last year. It's kind of a one dimensional big back, like two, 240 pounds. Right. So, um, his biggest competition is probably going to be K Tron Allen, which is another freshman, um, uh, maybe Kayvon Lee too, probably, but, uh, I'll let somebody else talk about K Tron Allen when we get to him eventually. Um, but he's another highly ranked recruit, uh, and Chris has been good about him too, but, but yeah, Singleton's got the pedigree, uh, the pedigree. He's got a little, a legitimate chance to see the field early. I think nobody here is really screaming at me and nobody's really seized this backfield over the last couple of years. So he's got the tools, he's got the upside and you know, he, he could probably develop into an early NFL draft pick. We'll certainly get that early production because of all the running backs we're probably going to talk about tonight. He's probably the first one who's going to have the most, uh, success i think getting on the field earlier than a lot of these other guys because the depth charts are there so joel has the second pick here in the first round um he went with drew aller uh he's an exciting quarterback heading to penn state six foot four 232 pounds currently number four on 24 7 sports as far as the rankings and the composite High school, you know, his career uh, last year, his senior year, f threw for over 4,000 yards, 48 TDs. He's got some rushing ability at three TDs too, man, but he's the protocol's typical size. He's got the big arm, appears to have all the tools. Of course, it's always a risk with uh, taking quarterbacks in the, you know, early in these drafts. We've all gotten bitten by the snake many times. Um, but the big question this year is going to be, you know, is he going to start over Clifford? The answer is probably no. You know, I'd love to see if he got in there towards the second part of the season, but I have a feeling we're going to unfortunately have to see Clifford for the first, uh, for another year this fall. But so there's Drew Aller going off the board at number two. Uh, Tyler, another uh, dashboard contributor, had the third pick, and he went with Branson Robinson. Uh, I think it's a solid pick also. Five foot ten, 220 pounds. If you've seen the pictures out on Twitter, the guy looks like he's um, looks like Nick Chubb already. Certainly big. He's, he's physical. 
Um, he's ranked currently on 24 seven at number four. Um, all the big programs were after him lands in a great spot going to Georgia. We know they produce running backs consistently averaged over eight yards a pop in, in high school. It's very limited in the passing game. So we'll have to see if he can contribute at the college level as far as reset receptions. But um, he's just a big college size, ready back, powerful. He's nimble. He's got lateral movement. We did a show. All the a lot of you guys were on that are on here tonight. We did a show looking at his film. It's on this YouTube channel, so you can go back and and, and take a look at that. But he's going to be working behind Kenny McIntosh and Kendall Milton this year. So um, you know he's going to have to wait his turn. I don't think we're going to probably see much of him unless there's a significant injury. But uh, nonetheless, I think that's a solid pick by Tyler at number three. So, Des, uh, you at number uh, the fourth pick. Who do you got? So, um, when I went with this pick here, uh, I went with Jadon Blue. Um, I was kind of surprised that I got him here, uh, just because I, I mean he's one of, he's been one of those top kind of guys that's been picked in a few of the supplemental uh, drafts I've seen. But he, he's a, a 5'11", 2, a 205 pound running back, four star according to. Um, 24 seven. Uh, I just really like what I've seen from him. Um, a little bit of the huddle, uh, films that they have out there and a little bit of tape that they do have. Uh, he, he has some good size. He can, um, really athletic, um, good speed, uh, when, 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 what you would like in a, in a Debbie running back. Um, it will be, he's, he's a, he's definitely, uh, He's definitely a really, really good running back uh, that you that you would definitely want on your on your rosters because uh, he just has the versatility and the athleticism to play. Uh, you know, be a three down running back. He can catch the ball. Uh, he has good speed and things like that. Uh, he's going to be uh, going to the University of Texas, so he's definitely going to be have to wait um, behind the, the RB one of uh, next year, which is Mr. B. John Robinson. So he'll definitely be playing behind him. But um, the sky's the limits for him. I, I really think, uh, especially with playing with the Texas program, uh, I think he 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 can come in and and, and uh, after Bijan leaves uh, to take over that backfield and and be a good prospect. I really think that he could be really good as far as rushing, getting high rushing yards, uh, touchdowns, just explosive, explosive athlete, um, and then just being able to catch the ball. I like I like running backs that do that. So that's why I picked him there. Yeah, that's that's a good call, man. I mean, he, you know, it's really interesting though because uh, the Debbie community is really high on on Blue, but a lot of the the recruiting you know sites you go to, they're he's out really outside the top ten. So we'll have to really it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. But nonetheless, I think he's that a, had a lot to do with uh, him not playing. Yeah, I yeah. mean, me and um, uh, Rich actually we didn't get. Yeah, he season. skipped the season, a- season or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, we did it. We did a dive into his recruiting history, and he was actually a borderline five star, like after his junior season. And then just from not playing, another guy's rising. I guess he like wrote, he, he fell down while other guys rose up. So I thought it was yeah. kind of interesting to see that he finished almost as yeah. a five star uh, last year after his junior season. So there's kind of a little yeah. context there to his ranking, at least. Yeah, we'll hopefully see. It's going to be like what's going on, going on like two seasons before we're going to see him play. So mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I kind of might see him this year. You might see him get a little run. They might dabble him in there a little bit. All right, Daniel, with the fifth pick, who did you take? Yeah, so this is a pretty easy pick for me, actually. I'm going with my wide receiver one here, Luther Burden. So five-star prospect, number two on the 24-7 composite as far as wide receivers go. You know, listed at six foot, 200 pounds. So he has the size that you're looking for. On film, you see a lot of really good things. You know, he's able to create separation. He has some power to break tackles. You know, he's shifty in open space. And he can go up and high point the ball and just make plays, you know. So just a a really good all-around prospect. You know, he has that NFL size already. The thing I like the most as far as what we're looking at for early production is that he has a great chance to step in to that wide receiver one role in Missouri because they're not really a hot pot right now for legitimate prospects. So I think he can go in and be that wide receiver one and really put up some legitimate stats early, which is what we're always looking for in the Debbie and C2C community is that early production. And I think he can provide that. So if you're taking him in a, you know, in a Debbie draft or even a C2C draft, you're looking at him as somebody that can perform early from an analytical profile that would bode well for him. And yeah, he's just an exciting player. And I think he has legitimate NFL upside. Yeah, I think he's got a high ceiling for sure. 
So uh, I got the sixth pick here, and uh, I, I'm going to go running back. It was, to me, between two people, Jamorian Miller and Travanta Citizen, and I am going to end up taking Citizen here only because Trey Sanders, I got burned on the last, um, you know, Alabama running back that I've taken. So um, I really like Citizen. I think he might have an opportunity to get on the field this year. I mean, he's six foot, 217 pounds. So again, I'm going to take a back that has the size. He's currently ranked number nine right now in 24 seven ran his senior year, 743 yards, averaged 11.4 yards a carry. Um, averaged 123 yards a game. You know, he's not the most elusive back if you watch, you know, the huddle films of this incoming class. But nonetheless, this kid is a one cut up the field runner. He's, he's got some burst. He can move some piles. He wasn't used again in the passing game. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of these backs weren't. Doesn't mean that it can't happen in college. But Jalen Knighton is the starter. He averaged 3.9 yards a carry last year. And Don Cheney Jr. is coming off a knee injury. Cameron Harris is gone. Harry um, Henry Parrish is an incoming transfer from Ole Miss, Miss. So I'm really not impressed with their current backfield right now. So I might have to wait a little bit, but I'm going to go with Citizen here. I feel pretty solid. I'm, I, I've gotten burned on running backs with with Marshawn Lloyd and Trey Sanders, but I, I got to keep going back to the well because uh, early in these drafts, I like to focus on the running backs, especially at number five. Instead, of, there's a little bit more depth and wide receiver. So ended up going with citizen so in the seventh pick sean another uh, dashboard uh, member uh, he, he selected evan stewart texas a&m wide receiver six foot 175 pounds currently number two on um in 24 7 sports for wide receivers only played three games last year as a senior before he decided to cut it short to prepare for college um he's a track star so that speed like stands out on film he's got twitchiness explosiveness and Nia Smith is the guy in Texas A&M without a doubt. So, but I think, you know, he should have the ability to get some play this year. Um, Haynes King looks like he's going to be the starter. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure, but uh, Chris Marshall, another exciting wide receiver, which I'm sure will be discussed here shortly. Um, also is going to Texas A&M. So I don't know. I think that's a really solid pick by Sean Rich. who was going to join us tonight. Uh, Devin Brown. He selected. Ohio State, you know, possibly the next host Ohio State uh, wide receiver uh, quarterback, six foot two, 196 pounds. He's currently the number six quarterback in 24 seven sports in high school. He had over 4,800 yards, 57 TDs, and 14 interceptions as a senior. Also rushed 80 times, um, averaging almost 30 yards a game, which is pretty sweet. So he's got that dual capability, super athletic. So Ohio State quarterback, of course, he's going to go early in these drafts, you know, because everybody wants the next Ohio State quarterback. So the big question is, is he going to be able to surpass Kyle McCord next year, right? I mean, that's going to be the big question. Um, I don't really have the answer for that. So, um, all right. So Rich took Devin Brown. Christian, uh, another dashboard supporter. He ended up taking Cade Klubnick, uh, another quarterback here taking going to Clemson, obviously, six foot two, 186 pounds. He is currently the number one on 24 7 sports in the quarterback rankings. Senior in high school, he threw for 3,200 yards, 43 TDs, three interceptions. He also rushed 70 times for an average of 36 yards per game. So he has some at least some mobility. Um, looks solid in the All American game. He was the All Star, I believe, in that. Um, but he was able to make all the throws. So I'd encourage you to go back and watch that game. It's the All American Bowl game that happened back in January, I believe. Um, so big question is, is what's DJU going to do this year, right? Is he going to be able to rebound off his awful season last year? Or, uh, is Cade going to maybe be able to pry that starting job away from him? I have a feeling DJ is going to start the season, but if DJ halfway through the season, I think looks like DJ from last year, we might see Cade earlier than we think. So, um, all right, man, that was, uh, the first nine picks, Britt, take it away. You got the 10th pick. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, so I took Chris Marshall Jr. He's going to go to Texas A&M, which I know necessarily doesn't bring a sweet taste to our taste buds ever since they haven't really put anyone out of consequence since Mike Evans. But I like this guy. He's 6'3", 195 pounds. He just took up football not even two years ago. His first year on the football field, he had 45 receptions for 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns. The next year, he had 15 touch or receptions for just under 500 yards and 11 touchdowns. So that's like 80% of his catches were for touchdowns. Um, and, you know, I'm just kind of reading up a little bit more on him. They know they, he's raw, 
but I think he just has the size. He has the frame. He's going to have that sort of innate ability to use his body to kind of defend against the defenders. And at that point, I, I like what I'm getting. I like what I see. And I think grabbing a five-star guy that's going to be growing a lot in the next coming years with that size is someone I'm willing to take a gamble on right now. Yeah, well, you tell you, he also looked awesome in the All-American Bowl game. I put a video out on this YouTube channel of him. He looks really good. He made some fantastic receptions along the sideline. It was really, really good. Um, so at the with the 11th pick, Dwight, um, he selected Relique Brown, uh, USC. Um, he is a Mater D from coming from that high school, which is obviously one of the better high schools that we all know in in high school football. Five foot eight, 185 pounds. Um, number three rank right now in 24 seven sports. So ran for over 1200 yards, 15 TDs and had 12 receptions as in, in his senior year in high school. Uh, he's a versatile player that's going to be playing at USC. So, um, it's going to be very interesting. He was a track star in high school. So he's got the speed. He's a little undersized. So from a Debbie aspect, not sure, um, I'd be picking him this early only if this was a, certainly a Debbie draft. Um, but he's got Travis day is now in town from Oregon. Uh, Austin Jones also came in as a transfer, but I think he is going to be put not only in the backfield, but all over, you know, the, the field. I think he's going to be lined up outside. I think he's going to be an offensive weapon for Riley. So I think from a C2C standpoint, really Brown could be really good. Um, but from a Debbie standpoint, probably taking a little early here. So, uh, Sal, you got the next two picks, buddy. Round us up. Yeah. When I'm, at 112, there's probably only like three, four quarterbacks that I think are worth early picks as far as freshmen, especially like a five-star guy like Ty Simpson, 6'2", 185, like I said, 24-7, uh, five-star. Um, after Aller, uh, Devin Brown, and Klubnik were gone, I kind of look at who are these next guys coming up. And I know on the NFL side, eventually for Debbie, most of these leagues, super flex. You're going to need these young quarterbacks coming in. And the next guy's up, Wigman, Howard, Stockton, Evers, Hauser. No one really, I think it ends, the, the run ends with Ty Simpson for a while. Uh, pocket passer, he's mobile when he has to be. I mean, he did run. I mean, last year he got, he ran for over 1,200 yards and had 15 touchdowns uh, at playing in Tennessee. And uh, high school in Tennessee. Uh, he threw for about 2,000 yards, 20 touchdowns, four interceptions. If you watch his huddle film, he is constantly on the move. I don't know if it was an offensive line thing or he just looks to move, but he doesn't just run. He's not moving and he's, he's looking and he finds his guys, but he can move mm -hmm. if he needs to. So like I said, I think he's one of the the main guys. I know they have Jalen Mil Milrow over there, so I don't know if he's really going to play this year, but um, his 24-7 comp for Ty Simpson is Matt Corral. Matt Corral. So, mm -hmm. and Jalen Milrose is Joshua Dobbs. So <laughs> when you look at future, I think the future is pretty right, especially being a five-star with uh, Debbie. And I know, I think it was Travis May I saw it before, where, you know, these five-star guys, if you look down the line, they have the most success in the NFL later on. I mean, you know, a lot of them, three, four stars, other guys make it. But the chances of a five-star guy making it in the NFL is a lot higher. And this being a Debbie draft, and he's kind of the last QB I see where I, I think after that, there's a big drop-off. Yeah, I would agree with you. So, so um, The other guy I picked will see no time probably this year, <laughs> Adam yeah. Randall. So Because I, I think he was probably – I don't know if he was going to be starting, but I think he definitely would have been in the rotation. Uh 24-7 Compton, he's wide receiver 17, national rank of 111, 6'3", 215. I mean, he had 23 offers, ran track, 100 meters, 10.9, 200 meters, 22.8. This guy is just fast, and he can block. He's a bully. I mean, he can. he's your outside receiver. So uh, I, I, could, I could have saw him definitely with Nagata, EJ Williams in front of him. I mean, and the rest of the receivers at Clemson, I think he would have got a lot of play this year, but um, I don't know if he's going to get any play with that ACL injury, but that's fine. I wasn't expecting, I'm thinking of him more down the line in Devi um, format that I, I think he's already ready size wise to be in the NFL and just, he, he'll get his, you know, two years or so. And if he does come back a little bit this year, 
uh, to succeed. He'll, he's, he's definitely somebody. I felt that's definitely better to go wide receiver looking at the next couple running backs. Um, I didn't see as much there. Like maybe I like Jamari and Miller, but the next like five, 10 picks after me, I wasn't as crazy about as far as Debbie potential. And when I'm looking in the first few rounds, I want to hit guys who are five stars and I want to hit guys who I can, they're already there as far as size and they're playing at these elite universities like Alabama and Clemson. Yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with that. I I think it's a it's a solid pick. So Dwight, he had the uh the second pick in the second round. He ended up taking Jamorian Miller, uh five foot ten, 195 pounds, uh number six ranked right now on 24-7 sports. This kid in four years averaged eight point one yards a tote. So he obviously can play the, the position, had twenty nine receptions also throughout the year. So that was a you know, again, another running back here that we have that is not you know, really getting a lot of receptions through four years, you know, 29 receptions aren't great. So, but I mean, I tell you, watch this kid's film. He plays bigger than his size. I just updated the the dashboard, his player profile. Um, you know, he's got Gibbs in, in front of him. He's got Sanders in front of him. So uh, McClellan's coming off an injury. Uh, he is in spring camp. So I think that's going to give him a little heads, you know, head start over Henderson, who is also, you know, a highly ranked athlete in this class. So, uh, yeah, Henderson, you know, he might get a little bit of run this year. Who knows? We'll have to see if his Sanders is ineffective in uh, spelling Gibbs when he needs a break. We might we might be able to see some some glimpses of Miller. But, you know, to your point, Sal, it's um it's an Alabama running back, just like an Alabama quarterback. Mm-hmm. So odds are that it's going to be a safe pick here uh, in the early part of the second round. I think there's really good value. So, um, all right, Britt, you had the third pick in the second round. Who'd you select? Yeah, I took Omarion Hampton. Um, I don't know what it is with me and North Carolina backs. I don't think it's a recency bias from Javante Williams and Michael Carter, but I just seem to fall in love with one every single year. Uh, last year was Kamaro Edmonds, and that just played out so well for me. So I wanted to dive <laughs> right back into the well. But I mean, when it comes to freshmen, and I mean, like, let's be honest, we're just we're throwing darts within darts right here. So I want guys that have the size because that's what's important. And this guy has the size already, six foot two fifteen. I was trying to get a little um athletic testing on him so i was reading a little um a head coach interview with this head coach he says they have a laser at their school and he ran a 438 laser at 215 so i mean that's phenomenal just as is i mean granted he's probably gonna do a little worse than that when he puts on some more pounds but he benches 365 he squatted 585 and the coach said you're not doing more than that because i don't need my my right running backs squatting more than that, but he said it looked like he was just standing out of a chair. He can clean 315. So, I mean, clearly the boy is rocked up. Uh, he did get injured in 2021, I believe, 2020. And so I think that kind of is why he's a little lower in the ranks. And honestly, compared to him and George Petaway, I, I just, I'm always going to size with a guy that has a size. And so I'm, I think that Hampton has a better chance at yeah. getting quicker. Um, quick game time. The only concern I have with him is he only had 17 receptions in, in, uh, I almost said college in junior high. Uh, granted in 2019, he was averaging 14 yards per reception, but that is just something that I want. I'm going to be keeping an eye on as he progresses through his collegiate career, how involved he is on the passing game. But I mean, at this point, uh, running backs with size and athleticism are dudes that I'm going to be having a very, very high, um, high owner or manage manage roster ship of yeah it sounds like a um solid pick there yeah we all got burned by those two running backs last year so you know i think that backfield's wide open and in fact we're going to talk about george petaway here very shortly so christian uh, with the fourth pick uh took connor wigman of texas a&m um, this kid was actually one of the top baseball prospects as well, coming out of Texas, six foot two, 208 pounds. He's ranked number three currently on 24 seven, uh, 2,500 yards, um, 29 TDs and six interceptions his senior season. He's got a big arm. Um, he's mobile. I think he looks like the, the complete package. Again, the big question is when, or when is he going to be able to see the field? Haynes King and Max Johnson right now are kind of battling it out. They're definitely going to be, um, the starters. So Connor will not be seeing the field this year. Might not even see the field for two years. If in fact, Haynes King does well. Um, and I think Fisher's got to win, you know, he had one yeah. of the best recruiting, you know, cycles oh. in, in recent history. They're bringing and, in defensive linemen like crazy. 
Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> they've got to win now. Right. And so I think he's going to lean on a guy who has experience. And so Connor Wegman, um, you know, might be a, a great quarterback down the road, but we're going to have to uh, wait and see, you know, where he ends up um, getting on the field and how long it's going to be. So Rich had the uh, next pick. Uh, he, Selected Keon Graves of um, Ohio State, 6'1", 175 pounds. He is currently a four-star prospect. Um, let's see what his rank is here uh, currently. But another explosive player. He also shined in the All-American Bowl game, had a couple nice receptions. But um, you know he's ranked number 14th overall, a little undersized. No, he's actually not. He's 5'11", 170. So my my apologies on his size. So smaller guy, probably more of a waddle size by the time he is a senior. Um, but just, you know, another player in that Ohio State. I can understand why people select wide receivers from Ohio State, from Alabama, because they have success and there is a likely chance that they are going to hit, um, you know, our dynasty rosters. So I certainly mm -hmm. understand why those selections are made here. So Rich took him at the fifth pick in the second round. Back to Sean. Uh, he selected another quarterback, Walker Howard from LSU, six foot one, one hundred ninety five pounds. He is the number six ranked uh, quarterback at the moment on twenty four seven composite. Got offers from other big schools like Alabama. Can't say that I've watched a lot of film on Howard, um, so I really can't tell you what his skill set is. But he's got Miles Brennan and Jaden Daniels in front of him, and um, I think he's just another list here of a quarterback who has potential but we are going to have to wait a couple years so um, we're going to talk about all these quarterbacks at the end of the draft being drafted in this round um, in these first two rounds so um, I got the next pick here with the 207 and I'm super excited I'm really really a big fan of CJ Williams also played at Mater D um, at six foot two 193 pounds just love his size, his physicality that he showed in the All-American Bowl game. He's ranked number 10 on 24-7 wide as far as the ranked on the wide receiver. He's a senior. Um, he had 51 receptions, 830 yards, 12 TDs as a senior, averaged 70 yards a game. I think he's an advanced, advanced route runner. He plays special teams too. He kicked, you know, return punts, he returned kicks. So that's always a good thing. But he's just got that college, college frame ready. He's got the, he's just big, he's physical. Um, I'm, I'm just really impressed with his athleticism and I think he's going to have an opportunity to play. Um, you got Mario Williams there at USC and Gary Bryant Jr. Who, and who knows what he's going to do. Brendan Rice is an incoming transfer, but, um, you know, I, I think that there's some ability for him to get some play this year, um, outside. I think he's going to eventually play outside. So, um, that is my, uh, selection there at the two Oh seven. So two eight, Daniel, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with Emmanuel Henderson here, and I'm admittedly a little bit skeptical about this pick, uh, mostly because this guy does not have a steak ass. So, you know, <laughs> he, he's uh, he's undersized for the position. He's 6'1", 185, you know, but he's the number two overall uh, running back in the 24-7 composite. He was the highest rated running back Alabama took this year over Jamarion Miller, I believe. So, there's something there, and we we went back um, a while back. We did a huddle show of him and watched some of his film, and I was just kind of enamored right away with a lot of what he shows on film. I think he's a quick, shifty guy that can really uh, make nice cuts in space. You know, his footwork is there. He showed a little power in college, um, or not college, but high school. I don't know how that will translate to the college game. Again, I think he has to put on weight if he's going to be a starting running back on Alabama, maybe they move him to wide receiver. Maybe they put him in sort of a hybrid role, but regardless when, when all else fails, you know, go with the Alabama running back. I think Alabama has shown that they find defined roles for guys that they like. So if he shows something in camp earns a role, I think there's a lot of potential there. I like it. Hey, Des, you got the ninth pick here in the second yeah. round. Who did you select? So with this pick, I went with uh, DJ Allen. Um, he's a 5'11", 190-pound uh, wide receiver prospect that's going to TCU. Uh, I, I picked him here because um, I, I just he was a name that I was I was hearing. Um, just getting a little bit of buzz, just a, a, another solid wide receiver that um, 
that 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 could possibly be, you know, after Quentin Johnston leaves, uh, you know, could kind of step up and take his place. Uh, he, he's he's pretty raw, though, what I can say, because when I looked into him, um, I want to say with his high school career, he he played pretty much a, a multiple positions. So he played quarterback, running back, wide receiver, defensive back. Oh. Um, he was a four star athlete. Uh, he played basketball. I want to say he ran track, too. So, so he's a pretty um, solid athlete. So. Uh, that that's pretty promising when I look into, especially some uh, a prospect that's going to a college uh, to go play wide receiver because you can go and, and and play that position if you're a pretty solid athlete, you can kind of get better as as time goes along. Um, I just look at someone like Scott Moore uh, who went to college and I mean he didn't play wide receiver until he went to college, so uh, and now he's looked at is going to probably might get first or second round draft capital, so. Uh, I, I really like DJ Allen. Um, I think he's he's just a, a really solid athlete, and um, I'm looking to 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 see what he what he possibly can do this year. And I think they have a new coaching staff, and I'm um, at TCU too, so uh, everybody's pretty excited about him. Very cool. All right, Tyler had the tenth pick in the second round, and he went with Detoria. Is that how you say that, Detoria McMillan? I'm so, so bad with Something names. Like that. Something like that, right? Well, anyway, yeah. six foot five, six foot four, one hundred and eighty-five pound wide receiver going to play in Arizona. This kid was a all-star volleyball player, so that's uh, mm -hmm. reading up on him, which is that not something you see very often. Um, but nonetheless, you know, he's got some uh, powerful legs, and yeah, you can jump. A, yeah, that's football. right. He's probably yeah. a uh, going to be a, uh, a great guy in a contested catch, uh, you know, situation. But he's ranked number five right now, twenty-four-seven composite as far as wide receivers. As a, a senior, 1,300 yards and 18 TDs. So he's a big, strong kid. I can't say that I've watched a ton of film on this particular player, but a lot of new things happening in Arizona. It's a yeah. program that people are getting excited about, adding a lot of new pieces. Uh, Jaden Delara is going to be their QB this year. Jacob Cowling uh, also kind of transferred in as well. So uh, he should have an opportunity to get on the field and possibly, you know, be one of these early breakout wide receivers that we get excited about. So uh, that's definitely a, a good pick there by yeah. Tyler. Um, Joel, he had the 11th pick. Did you want to say something, Sal? Yeah. Uh, for McMillan, uh, it probably like, I mean, uh, Jaden Delora is probably going to start this year, but that he, uh, McMillan played at Servite High School and the tight end. And the quarterback both went there too to Arizona, so it nice. might not be as much this year. But Arizona is making moves, and in, in the Pac-12, anything can happen. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I know it's a program that um, is on the rise. So Joel had the eleventh pick, and he took the other North Carolina running back, uh, the highly another running back recruit, George Petaway, five foot eleven, one hundred ninety pounds, number eight right now as far as on twenty four seven sports. Um, you know, last year he had 1,683 yards on the ground, averaging 13 yards a tote, 23 touchdowns, had 30 receptions for 550 yards, averaging 18 yards a reception with six TD. So he was certainly a productive player, uh, in high school, especially had the receiving chops as well. And again, in the all American bowl, he made a fantastic catch. I recorded that whole game uh, down the sideline. He didn't get a lot of run in between the tackles, but he made a spectacular kind of body adjustment catch down the field. So he could be that kind of running back that has some, um, you know, ability to you know stretch the field a little bit as well to, to be more of a versatile player, but they lose Ty Chandler there. Khalib Hood and Kamara Ed Edmonds last year were the two guys we were talking about at this time last year that, you know, who knows one of those guys may emerge. We're not, we're not year. We're not, we're not sure yet. So that's a really, a lot of changes happening in North Carolina. Sam Howell's gone. Uh, Joshua Downs is really the only name that people probably really know from a Debbie standpoint at North Carolina. So they are really starting over as a program, trying to, uh, you know, see if uh, Drake may gets in there to start at the quarterback position. So I don't know. One of these guys may emerge. So I think it's a pretty solid pick by Joel, a highly ranked running back. You, you might as well. So Corey, you got the uh, last pick to round us out here uh, in the final two rounds. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So with the, uh, the last pick I went with uh, Gunner Stockton, uh, maybe a little homerism here, maybe not. Yeah. I actually really do like him when I watched him. Um, six, one, two twenty. A uh, nice build on him, kind of reminiscent of like a Sam Howell build, that really stocky kind of uh, a little bit shorter, not like a 6'4 type guy, but a really stocky build. 
uh, gets a lot of power out of his body. Um, while really productive, dual threat kind of guy in high school as well. Uh, just under fourteen thousand passing yards for his whole career. Uh, over one hundred and seventy touchdowns. Uh, he had four thousand rushing yards. Uh, two two one thousand yard seasons in there. Uh, over seventy five touchdowns on the ground. So he was he was a true dual threat. Um, his last season was really impressive. Uh, 55 passing touchdowns to one interception. So, I mean, like that's, you took care of the ball. You love to see that uh, almost a thousand yards rushing. Uh, he's a strong arm guy with a lot of arm talent. Uh, does a really good job making plays out of, out of script, uh, keeps his eyes down the field, you know, which is a thing that a lot of NFL teams are craving nowadays when you're watching guys like Josh, Josh Allen and, and Patrick Mahomes. Um, He's got good mobility, obviously, uh, but inside the pocket as well. Um, he's not a guy who always looks to run first. At least he didn't in, high, in his high school film. He did kind of in the All-American Bowl, but um, he can really even kind of make any throw in the book with his arm. And he, he is talked about as one of the most powerful arms in this class, which is something you like to see. Um, he's a plus athlete with legit rushing ability. He went over um, probably a little more juice than a guy like Howell, but he does kind of have that that rushing ability. He's kind of on the Howell spectrum of rushing, you know, a tough, tough, gritty runner. Um, showed a little bit of it in the All American Bowl that I was just mentioning. I rushed for a touchdown, yeah. scrambled a few times, made a nice few plays. Um, he enters kind of a, an uninspiring group at Georgia, so I, I don't think he's going to get on the on the field year one. Um, we all know about Stetson Bennett, uh, you know, former walk on to national champion. Now um, the reports for him have been kind of uh, weird uh, at the beginning of spring. He was playing with the third team, playing with the second yeah. team. Lately, he's back with the first team. So it looks like they're probably going to go with Stetson Bennett again. But Carson Beck has been getting some uh, some praise. He's been turning heads. Um, he's going into his fourth year already as well. So I don't know how long he's going to be there. Um, Vandegrift is also there, five-star from last year. Probably going to be if Beck ends up leaving and then Bennett's going to run out of, uh, out of eligibility here. But Vandegrift might. Uh, be his biggest competition, uh, five-star recruit. A lot of people in this community aren't the biggest on him. You know, he's kind of more that statue guy in the mm -hmm. pocket. Um, Buzz has been fairly quiet around him, so who really knows? But I, George is kind of a questionable spot, too. I know they haven't had, like, a 3,000-year passer since, like, 2011 or 2012. Um, they start guys with seniority a lot of the time, so it's kind of hard to see how Stockton is going to fit in, but I'm just kind of betting on the talent here with a guy that I really liked and a guy that I kind of fell in love with when I was watching him. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how that Georgia quarterback room shakes out here, you know, by the time fall ro rolls around. So, all right, man. So there you got it. There is, uh, you know, the, the first two rounds. Uh, I'll run them through real again. We got Nick Singleton, Drew Aller, Branson Robinson, Jordan Blue, Luther Burden, Trey Bond, Citizen, Evan Stewart, Devin Brown, Clay Klubnik, Chris Marshall, Relik Brown, and Ty Simpson. Is all in the first round, second round, Adam Randall, Jamarian Miller, Marion Hampton, Connor Wegman, Keon Graves, Walter Walker Howard, CJ Williams, Emmanuel Henderson, DJ Allen, Tatoria McMillan, George Petaway, and Gunnar Stockton. So um, that wraps up the first two rounds. And what we did is actually we did a 10 round. So, but I'm going to post five rounds, you know, here in a minute. But I want to talk to you guys about. There were seven quarterbacks taken in the first two rounds. And it's just, I'll tell you, it's, it's when I look at, you know, the past history, right? I mean, this time last year, we, we thought it was a slam dunk that Corral and Hal were going to be first round picks. They were the number one and two on our rosters. We had uh, Spencer Rattler, man, how my, how DJU. Man, how things can change in the quarterback room relatively quickly, right? They, I mean, every position and player can fall, rise, or, or whatever. But um, I don't know. My thought process is is really having a hard time taking quarterbacks early. You know, I know we all want them, but what are your guys' thoughts on that? I think for me, like I, I can see Aller, Brown, Klubnik, and Simpson, but that's probably it. For me, as far as picking them early, if if Simpson wasn't there, I would have picked uh, Jamari and Miller and Adam Randall. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the cutoff. Five star guy. I I feel like Wegman could be a potential one up there, but I don't know. I just I think when it comes to freshman drafts, you want to keep it as chalky as possible. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, you I have think to just take shots too ahead. sometimes. Cause yeah. I mean, the NFL is all about quarterbacks and it's all about super flex. And if you can hit on one and, and you can take that risk, you can afford to take that risk. Maybe if you paired it with uh, a stud running back or a stud wide receiver in the first round and you go in the second round and take somebody who's going to a good program or a good school. I mean, I think sometimes their shots worth taking. I'm not going to load up on like the first three rounds of quarterbacks, but I think, I think you got to take your shots sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's a risky strategy for sure, based on what we've seen in the quarterback landscape, you know, and of all positions in football, it's the hardest to project from college to the pros, you know? So again, yeah, I, a couple of these guys could work out. It could be some of the later guys that work out. We don't really know. So I personally, I'd feel more comfortable going quarterback in the third or fourth round. I know you can see, I took Nick Evers here in the third, a guy that I like, um, and maybe loading up on wide receiver and running back in the first couple rounds. Yeah. We're yeah. looking at the last the next three rounds, only two quarterbacks were taken. So it's certainly understandable. We're all, the, I mean, I, I've said it to you guys before. I just can't believe we can't find 32 people that can play that yeah. NFL well, quarterback Marcus position. Marcus Mariota well. has a job. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't you start with that, Sal. He is a well deserving young that's man. That's what we pray for. Yeah. <laughs> that's why yeah. you draft first round picks in your rookie draft because they get jobs all the freaking time. James <laughs> Winston still going yeah. nuts with that quarterback class, still, still supplying value. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So, all right, guys, I want to thank you for uh, doing this. Um, always having a good time hanging out with you guys and, and doing draft. We're going to do a show next uh, after the NFL draft, after we super excited. It's, it's still rookie season. We are going to get into uh, doing a mock draft after the NFL draft. So thanks, guys, for uh, joining today. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Take care. Later. Later. Mm-hmm.